the recording. So this is the uh, June 5th, 2024 so Menden Select Board meeting, and I'd like you uh, please join me and um, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Thank you all for being here. Uh, so we have quite a uh, robust agenda. I've heard the term. So, uh, so there are, I believe, printed copies at the back of the room. If you would like to uh, have one. So, Greg, I think you said you left them on the shelf uh, okay. by the door. Yeah. So, if anybody would like a printed copy, it's also available online on the town website. So, our first. So. Uh, we are going to try to move through some of the items very quickly since we have so many things on the agenda. Uh, so we have suggested time frames, but we're not going to stick necessarily. We expect many of the things to be faster. Um, so, uh, but we do have some goals to uh, get done today. A number of the items are very time sensitive. Um, but I would like to start by opening up the floor to any citizen statements and petitions. Do not see any, and uh, please let me know if you see any hands on the team meeting. Okay, um, so then the next thing on the agenda is uh, to approve but not release meeting minutes for two executive sessions from April 17th, 2024 and May 8th, 2024. I move to approve the April 17th, 2024 and May 8th, 2024 executive session minutes, not for release. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Motion passes. All right. Uh, next up, we have uh, some correspondence. So first of all, we have uh, from the Girl Scouts. Um, let's see. Anyone have that letter up and ready? Oh, you do. Oh, okay. Thank you. Would you would you like to read it, Brendan? It or Okay, how about you? We'll save my voice. All right, said. It says, Dear Town Administrator, I am writing on behalf of the Girl Scouts of Central and Western Massachusetts Incorporated to ask you if you would pre please consider sending us a congratulatory message of commendation from you to the Girl Scouts who have earned the prestigious Girl Scout Silver Award. The Silver Award is the highest achievement that a Girl Scout in grades 6 through 8 can earn in Girl Scouting. This is a significant accomplishment as earning the award requires many years of challenge and commitment to service, leadership, career exploration, and action project take action projects recipients must demonstrate ability and skill in goal setting planning implementation relating to others and creating a project which will benefit the greater community we are proud to present for your consideration these silver award girl scouts on the attached sheet the work these young women the work of these young women is a lasting gift of service to their communities and then uh it goes on to say we will be honoring the silver award girl scouts on wednesday wednesday june 12, 2024, with presentations and media hour at Mechanics Hall in Worcester. So, yes, we also have been presented with a list of names of Girl Scouts and the projects that they've done. It's, it's quite a long list. Um, so I guess the, the, are we uh, amenable to sending these? Uh, this. Um, this awards or uh, like citations, congratulatory, congratulatory message to these. Yeah, I think uh, in the same manner that we do for the Eagle Scouts, uh, yeah, absolutely. And do for the Girl Scouts as well. Okay. It looks like we have one member of that community from Menden. Yes. Okay. Oh, okay. So, so just the one member. Okay. So that makes it easier. So, yep. okay. So that is. Uh, I don't know if we should read the name. So. Well, typically, what we probably should do is circle back. When's the date of this event? It's next week. I believe the twelfth was it. Yeah. Yes. Make a make a motion to to commend them and, and use the usual verbiage. We just don't have it. From. I would certainly make a motion to send a letter of commendation to the Girl Scouts in honor of the Silver Award. Okay. Second. Right. Any further discussion? I just repeat the name of the individual. Uh, the individual is Felix Shepes of Menden, and the project title is Proper Pronoun Use in the Classroom. Any further discussion? Nope. All right. All those in favor? 
Aye. 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 All right. Thank you. All right. And then next we have another uh, letter. Um, so this was addressed to the previous chair. It was sent to us in May. I don't know, if, Mike, if you would be interested in reading that or if we, you would like me to. I, I don't have it here in front of me. I certainly will read anything if you somebody sends it over to me okay. or sends me a link. I believe it's in the is it in packet. The, it is. Item 4B. It's in the packet. Thank you. And actually, we have a hard copy if you would like to. I'm just looking that. at the packet. I'm not sure I was on that email. Sure. This is dated May 14th. It says, uh, dear Mr. Morale, members of the select board, Writing a request for your consideration, as you know, Governor Baker officially declared June as Pride Month in the state of Massachusetts in 2017. I've read and fully understand the recently accepted flag policy for the town of Menden. The focus of a display on town property is not for the purpose of free speech, but rather to confirm and celebrate the town's official sentiments. My requesting my reasons for requesting this conversation are as follows: Young people in the LGBTQIA community are four times more likely to attempt suicide than their peers. Suicide is the second leading cause of death in 10 to 14 year olds and the third leading cause of death in 15, 24 year olds. The reasons given are loneliness, feeling unsafe, and lack of acceptance by family, friends, school, and community. I believe that Menden is a town that embraces diversity and inclusion. Our residents want their neighbors to feel safe, supported, and welcome here. These young people are living and being educated in our town. Some small gesture may give hope to individuals who are struggling with a path toward their future. Thank you for your time and consideration in this matter. I understand the time of this correspondence is a bit late. My hope is that it can be the start of the conversation. And uh, sincerely, it's uh, signed by Barbara Bear, 103 North Ave in Menden. I, I can tell you that I actually had a, a conversation previously in, in previous years where we considered actually um, flying the pride flag, you know, over town hall during uh, Pride Month, and uh, because of issues to do with not having a flag policy, we didn't do that. Now we do have a flag policy, which really precludes us from doing anything like that. But you know that there's a, a specific exclusion that the flag can only be flown. The, only the American flag, state flag. Uh, I, I believe the uh, MIA, you know, missing soldiers flag is allowed to be flown from our uh, from any of the town's flags. However, I would I fully support um, Pride Month and anybody's and anybody who wants to celebrate Pride Month. I'm not sure where we go from there, but uh, I, I think her the letter is correct when it says that men is a town that embraced diversity and conclusion inclusion. I agree with that 100 percent. Thank you. Yes, and I was uh, also I appreciated uh, that this uh, person started this conversation and I what I'm uh, hoping is that we can get something on the agenda in a future meeting to discuss if there are. Uh, so she did not expressly ask about us flying a flag, although I think that sort of the suggestion of bringing up the flag policy yeah. sort of implies it, but um, there are other ways that the town could potentially uh, formally mark uh, Pride Month, such as some sort of declaration. Um, and I think, you know, I would be open to discussing that at a future agenda item. So this is, it, June is Pride Month, and so chances that we could do that for this year, uh, probably there isn't time, but there's always next year. And so I would be in favor of considering that in a future agenda item. Yeah, Any she's, yeah. she said it's, uh... She hopes it can be a start of the conversation. What I'm hearing is we want to continue the conversation. Right? Yes, yes, and Absolutely. I right, and I think right, Jason, you had I think talked about possibly having a um, investigating questions of diversity, equity, and inclusion policies for our town. So that would be another question. That yeah, we can follow up. on to our board policies. Yeah, right. Absolutely. So this might be this might dovetail to some of that discussion. Okay. All right, any further comments or questions about that? 
Thank you. All right, so uh, next up we have some appointments and uh, reappointments. Um, so we have two two items, uh, which is one is uh, for um, an applicant to the Economic Development Committee. Um, and I believe, uh, so is that person here Online. today? Okay. okay, let's see. Did we yep, have I'm a here. Okay, all right. Thank you. Hi. Yes, you had a, you had sent a letter uh, expressing your interest in uh, being appointed to the uh, Economic Development Committee, um, and it looks like it was uh, a number of weeks ago and possibly uh, sent to the previous executive assistant. So, um, so I I understand uh, that. There's a vacancy on the economic development committee, but possibly multiple ones. Uh, but we have not yet heard a recommendation from that committee about the appointments. And what we would uh, encourage you to do is co um, contact the economic development committee chair and potentially attend a meeting so that they can speak to you and uh, consider their recommendation on your appointment. And did you want to add more? Did you? We were able to see the email that uh, the chair sent just a, just a few minutes ago, and I'll, I'll read it. Okay, thank you. I have not seen um, that it's, yet. It's to the board. <clears throat> it, it, uh, it says, we've heard from two potential members about the EDC Economic Development Committee. One who was Falgan Patel, who expressed interest to us, who was invited to our last meeting, but whom has not yet had the opportunity to meet with us. I reviewed his resume and it looks good to me, but I cannot speak for the rest of the boards we have not discussed. The other is JP Parnas, who attended our last meeting and whom the committee is in favor of appointing. He was asked to reach out to the select board with a letter of interest. Uh, the committee currently has room for both. So I, I think it looks like uh, the one who we have on the agenda hasn't met with the EDC yet, and the other one hasn't. Um, Sent reached out to economic development, but okay. didn't send a letter of interest directly to this board. So okay. the suggestion is that um, I don't know if if, uh, Mr. if, if Parnas is here. Um, is it? Or oh, online? No, it doesn't look like it. So I guess we need probably should circle back, have them both of them right circle back to the EDC and then get them on another agenda. So yes, what we'd love to do is uh, revisit this on a future agenda once we have had a recommendation from the economic development committee themselves okay Great. thanks for your interest yes thank you and and uh yes hopefully we will uh be able to appoint you at a future meeting if all works out well um all right so the next item is uh the uh fire department promotional appointment um let's see Yes, Hello. thank you, Chief. We have our fire chief here. That's your yes. us in tonight. Absolutely. Try to be as thank brief you. as possible. Um, so I'm coming to you to request uh, you guys consider appointing Wendy Morganti as a career fire lieutenant with the Men and Fire Department. Um, I did send you guys his resume as well as a brief write up of him earlier today. As you can see from that, he's Ever since he's been appointed, he's been continuing training and developing himself as well as others within the department. Uh, the promotional process started back in November, I think. Uh, there was a written exam followed by a oral board with area fire chiefs that had no connection to any of them. So we try to be as transparent and fair and partial as we could for the whole process. Uh, last Wednesday was the, the final oral board and we met as a department, the fire officers and Lenny came out on top. So we'd like for you guys to consider appointing him as lieutenant on the fire department. Thank you. Chief, is this a new appointment or a replacement? Uh, so. Technically it would be replacing Chief Kessler at, for the right. on call. Yeah, uh, when Chief Kessler was here, I was on call, one of the three on call officers. Uh, since then, I've maintained being on call, and it would be nice to have another company officer to cover the call weeks. Do we have, does anyone have any further questions? Oh, I just 
Lenny, you're a great guy. I just want everybody to know, I think one of the greatest part of your personality is your interaction with the rest of the, you know, staff members of this town outside of um, fire. Uh, I think that's great. Every time I see you guys helping out, it's awesome. So. All right. It sounds like we're lucky to have you. So, <laughs> Thank it's you. wonderful. Right. Chairman, I move to appoint uh, Lennon Morganti as a fire lieutenant. Second. Any further discussion? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Beginning at the firehouse, I believe we're tentatively scheduled for the 20th. Okay. I've been in discussion with Alan to have pinning and swearing in for all the new members of the department. So wonderful. You guys are more than welcome to join us. I'll send out a formal invite when we iron out the date. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much, guys. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, so our next item uh, is item six bullet. The room clear a little bit just so it's get some of that squeaking out of the way. <laughs> All right, so our next item is to uh, consider and vote uh, on the finance director, treasurer collector pay adjustment for FY24, so the current fiscal year. Um, and this came out of some discussions on the board uh, that uh, many would like to recognize the hard work and dedication of our finance director and treasurer collector, uh, Jody Kersey, for stepping in and stepping up to do work uh, that were that uh, work above and beyond of the um, responsibilities laid out in the contract and job description of the finance director treasurer collector so this spring which is a traditional time for the town administrator to put together the budget we had no full-time uh, permanent uh, town administrator we had a sequence of experienced and capable interim uh, town administrators but both were limited by part-time hours and the time when the budget needed to be done largely fell between the terms of our two uh, interim town administrators. And so our finance director stepped up and stepped in to do the budget. Um, in the job description, at the, um, ordinarily the finance director treasurer collector would be assisting the town administrator with the development of the town budget. Um, However, in this case, uh, Jody Kersey led the process to develop the budget and in addition did work that was also um, beyond the job description in uh, exploring the capital planning process um, and doing some additional financial analysis related to a proposed capital project for the senior and community center. And so we had, uh, in addition, uh, also, uh, did a lot of work with collective bargaining that would ordinarily be done by our uh, permanent full time town administrator. Uh, also, uh, on top of that, a number of department heads, as well as the finance committee, uh, expressed appreciation for the co collaborative and transparent approach of the finance director and treasurer collector in working on the budget this spring. All right, any, would anyone like to add or comment? Discuss. I thought the process was smooth to the point of um, I've not I haven't seen as many uh, operation department heads speak uh, in terms that demonstrate it was a smooth process, collaborative process. So a lot of the things we as a board have put out there as sort of a way we want to do business. So um, you know, she led by example uh, through the spring and um, it's one of those things where the, the amount of it's it, it's work ebbs and flows all this work uh, flowed into a three to four month period in the spring where it all had to get done at once so i think that's one of the things we also want to recognize in terms of the work that was done any other comments mike's happy she's doing a great job <laughs> 
So we had talked about, in addition to expressing our uh, appreciation for this work, we had talked about the potential of a bonus in recognition of the work above and beyond what is in the contracted duties. I move to grant Jody Kersey a FY24 bonus pay in the amount of $5,000. Second. Okay, hey, any further discussion? Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, thank you very much. And I, I believe Jody is not here, but we hope that she will watch this recording. So thank you, Jody, for all of your work this spring. Much appreciated. We are deeply appreciative. Okay. All right, so next up we have, um, we're going to be uh, discussing the Senior and Community Center Building Committee. Um, so for this item, uh, we, this is, as we know, we recently had an election where we had an, a vote about a debt exclusion. So we had a town meeting um, in May where we voted, uh, the town voted by a two thirds majority to support the senior and community, the building of a senior and community center. But at the ballot uh, in, on May 14th, the, um, the question did not pass. And so now we are faced with a question now that we have this committee of figuring out how to move forward. So thank you. We have here, uh, if you could just introduce yourselves, please. Yes, I'm Phil Sipley, uh, chair of the uh, building committee. Dave Kersey, vice chair. Okay, thank you for uh, taking the time this evening to go for this. The committee met after the vote. We lost by 52 votes, which is a really small margin. And after the committee's review, we'd like to continue this effort moving forward because the need is still there. Uh, it hasn't gone away. Some of the questions we have for the select board would be the reaffirmation of the priority of this project. As we went into last year, we looked at this project as the number one priority for the town. So we're looking to get some reaffirmation there. And also to explore the way we can communicate to the organizations or to the town at large to answer the many questions that came up on the negative side meaning school funding, fields and recreation funding, fire department funding, I just can't pay any more taxes, to name a few. Uh, and I'd like to have a more consolidated effort of focusing areas beyond our committee to be able to address the needs of the community. And then if we do move forward, there will be some expenses we'll need to incur as we look at alternatives and redesigns. We also asked Eagle and uh, Elena to look into what if scenarios of when we could bring this back to a vote. So I'd like to have some discussions around that as well. Uh, so uh, Mike Gardard was kind enough to uh, help compile our notes from that meeting with town council that we had. I have a few handouts. I think Mike, did you send around the electronic version? Um, so we have a small number of handouts. This was late breaking news, um, but I'm happy to share. One would be good. Some. Thank you. So, um, I'm happy to share. That must be screwed up on the screen. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll share. Great, thank you. Second. So just so people know what we're looking at, there are a number of options that the town has when in the case of um, where, especially where a question passed at town meeting, but did not have pass at the town election. So we are exploring, we wanted to explore all of the potential options of how the town could proceed. Um, so that is coming up, but I think perhaps before we decide, uh, how to proceed, I guess there is the question of whether we want to proceed. So this would be an opportunity for the board to decide whether this is a project that we want the town to pursue. Do we want to have the, um, the 
Senior Center, Senior and Community Center Building Committee for the Senior Center Expansion Committee continue their efforts. We appointed this committee, um, I think, last summer. Um, so now is the opportunity to, to decide if we want to continue. Because uh, I think first off, that is the big question. So, so my two cents, as Phil, as you said, the need is not going away. And I think we owe it to the seniors in town to, to see this through. That being said, the election results are also a message from townspeople. So we have mm -hmm. to take you know that feedback as mm -hmm. well and, and roll it into the plan. So I'd be in favor of moving forward, maybe with some adjustments and a total budget if we could. I mean, I know uh, I think most of you know that I was very supportive of this project that I'd been a member the a select board member of the committee. Um, so if Shouldn't be a surprise that I'm in favor of continuing the project, continuing to explore how we can make at least some version of this project happen, even if we need to adjust it in some way. So I'm I'm also in favor of continuing. Um, ditto. Mike, ditto. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. More more community space is needed. I think the one thing that I heard, you know, filtered or not, was that the the people uh, who, who feel like they're missing out on whatever is being delivered here, like it's not being delivered to them. But those are the people that we need to connect to if this needs to succeed. And I don't think I heard just like one specific, like if, you, if, if I had a sign that was four feet tall and it was yellow, I would vote for this. I didn't hear like a very specific I need. I just felt like what I heard what's in it for me, not me personally, but me from the from the voters perspective and some of that was fields and, and recreation. Uh, some of that is like, how does this pertain to the youth? And now we all saw that through, you know, countless presentations, but somehow that didn't connect. So I, I don't know what that means. I think it probably means a lot of different things, communicating with these groups that have sort of been forming in the community, going to the youth leagues. Um, but but yes, I'm still fully in support of, of having this space for emergency management, for community, for seniors, like every every reason that has already been said multiple times. I appreciate your input. And that, that's you highlighted a key area, getting the message further out to the community, giving them a chance to input. And I'd like to see an opportunity to really people to invite the people who didn't want the center or devoted no to the center to come and discuss their needs. I think that would be an ideal situation. Right. I, I know another group that expressed uh, some desire to have a, a different capital project was about the fire station. And I think that's something that we will explore. I know further down on the agenda is talking about our capital planning group and capital plan working uh, group. So um, certainly the town has a lot of uh, capital needs. And um, so I hope that this is an opportunity for us to like engage with the big picture, the big picture plan for the future, um, because we have the potential to do a number of these projects, just not all at once. And so that's what we're working through. And um, Mike M, did you have any additional thoughts? I would just say that I, I think if we do a better job of educating people about exactly what what's involved in this, I think it'll make a big difference. Right. And I, I think it's also true that um, any any kind of an effort. I mean, we have this has been a three year process. Right. We started it three years yes. ago. When a group of seniors came in here, and really, you know, told us. And I would go far, back even further because, yeah. you know, my my dad who passed in 2016 had been. Yeah in my ear about this when I was on the FinCom long yep. before that. And it's well past due. I think it's about 30 years since uh, the original senior center was yeah. built by a group of volunteers. Um, and, you know, they, they deserve it. The town people deserve it. You know, the, certainly on a federal level, we just received uh, communication, you know, from uh, uh, our, our congressman's office that you know they're still working through that process. So as yes. far as they're concerned, it's it's far from over. Right. You know, they're still diligently right. working towards it. And I think it would be great if we could find a way to get uh, feedback and have have people come in and communicate why you know why they didn't vote or why they voted yep. no or why they you know what they would like to see so we can 
you know, adjust the proposal, perhaps. And, and I I, oh, sorry. I would just like to add on the on the topic of uh, communication and education. I think that the committee did a remarkable job of reaching out to groups I and agree. the groups that they reached. But apparently, we uh, the enough. committee did not reach everybody, and so this is uh, uh, this is our opportunity to continue the outreach yeah. efforts. You know, it, it takes time. It does. And even though we talked about it for three years, you know, the public committee really, uh, I, I think the, the push really started when the architect came up with a rent. Yes, there was that was that was not that long ago. Yeah, that was a short Mike, period of time. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I don't think we can expect the, the building committee to drive all the communication. Right. Agreed. Oh. I think it's incumbent on this board to actually make sense of all the stuff that's out there Agreed. Yeah. so that people see where they're the with them you know, proposition, what's in it for me? Um, they need to see where their thing is and where it lies on the potential roadmap. Right. Is that what you see the capital plan is that like roadmap where I, it I, fits what's coming? Well, for, for, for financial, but I think actually this board should probably plan on putting together more of a strategic view of what all these things look like. You think about the board policy document yeah. and the difference between, you know, maybe what the, the strategy the planning board is doing versus the strategy the select board is doing and how we make those mesh yeah. but we should be engaging you know youth teams the there's a meeting on monday to talk about fields but that's actually on the school land mm -hmm. um, we have a broader need than that yeah. so i think we actually as a board i would recommend we talk about this when we think about goals and objectives for fy25 putting that down take the master plan and put it into an executionable executable plan so so people see what they want to see and need to see so it's not a me versus you it's okay you're up first i'm 2028 or whatever that whatever it may be so i think it's a critical you know, point. I, I think a specific piece to it just to to bring it bring it to further focus was a conversation of it wasn't just a senior center it was a senior and community center and i think the police chief did a good job of really explaining why that delineation made to be, needed to be made and about all those additional needs um and they're not, I would argue, they're requirements that we're not meeting currently. And a lot of people commented about that. Yep. But I think that's the job that we need to do is do a better job or we just need more time. I don't think we did a bad job. It's just, right. it just takes time. I think, yes, it. Yep. Things did need to move quickly with the timeline that we had with the yep. architect, architect and the estimates. Um, and now we have more time, <laughs> have, uh, potentially. We potentially. Have. I think the point's well taken. I think it's a broad view. Mike, you hit it on, hit a good key point saying that the board, I think we need guidance as a, a group of, of townspeople. Where's the priorities? Are you hearing me? And as a committee, it was difficult to answer the needs of, I need fields. I need a new school. I need a fire. I, th I think it's important too to get your department heads on board to get internally on board so we aren't all competing against each other. Um, like when we did the police station, I mean, that passed 700 votes, still put under no. Part of that was the seniors. The seniors got on board, they helped out, they knew the need, they recognized the need, and they knew they were in the queue. So they knew they were coming up next, you know, and that's part of the reason I got on the committee too, is they supported us when we needed it, I'm supporting them when they need it. And I think they're next in the queue and to get all the department heads and everybody on, online saying, let's push for this together. This is a need in the community for all of us. It's not just one department and, and it's going to take three to four years for your next project anyways. And by the time it gets to a vote, it's six or seven. You're further down the line with those capital projects where things drop off and you fit in. So if we can explain to people that they're going to have their turn to fit in that wheel, like Selectman Goddard was saying, I think that's important because then if we're all on the same page, if we're all on the same front as a town, as as employees, then that means something too. And I do think the Capital Improvement Committee can can manage a lot of that since the engagement yep. is primarily within the department heads well, yep. in terms of capital projects. Yep. So if there are any volunteers that want to join a newly formed capital improvement committee, send us your uh, interest. <laughs> we'll try to need a working group to a committee. Otherwise, Phil's going to do it all. So. <laughs> <laughs> Vacation time. Uh, so I think I guess, so, so he, sorry, can I say something? So, I yes. think you know, be, be, being a member of the town, the problem is that we don't get a lot of the communications. So even if you seek interest or not, you know, seek interest, 
there's not much communication that goes around. So it, it's very hard. You know, I look at other towns and they're ten, tenfold better than us because there's a lot more communication happening. I feel like the gap is like, if you want to get to people that live in this town, I've been living in this town for 11 years. And, we would be happy know, to hear recommendations of how we might better communicate. So yeah, I like, know, like, 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 so if, yeah, like, if there's, so we, uh, you know, we do our best. We have all of our meetings recorded uh, and posted online, but certainly there's always room for improvement. And so, yes, we do welcome suggestions about how better to do it. We hope to have a permanent town administrator who often is in the role of outreach and communication with the community. Um, and so certainly this isn't a good time to make suggestions about how we can better communicate with the community in the future. And I just want to point out there's really a tight, tight synchronization between the Economic Development Committee and the Capital Improvement Committee, Falcon. <laughs> so if you choose to join. Yes. I think yeah. you should be a council member. <laughs> It, you know, I, I, no, I, no, I, my, my, my concern is though, right? Like, like, like the, the, the time it takes guys, right? Like to, to take actions, I think it's, it's too long, right? Like it, the days go by and weeks go by and it's like, okay, I didn't hear anything. What's going on? Like, you know, like no one's gonna have the patience to follow up and things like that. Right? Like, like if you want to really activate town folks to join, right? Like, like, like and, and be part of decision making and, and really make a change, then like there has to be proactive communication so that okay. people we, do well, want to get involved. Okay, thank you for that. We do welcome that and we hope one way that we hope to engage people is having more people come to our open meetings, uh, joining committees as you have like as you are have expressed an interest in doing. And certainly, please do share with us if you have an example of a way that another town communicates with the with the public. Please do send that along. Like if you could send that by email to our um, interim town administrator, that we, we would be able to consider that at a future meeting. So thank you for that. Great idea. We'd like to hear the top two or three. I, you know, I would point out that there's a, a huge vacuum that uh, that the town it was left from the town crier. Uh, newspaper a couple of years ago went away because that was a tool that we could use yes. went to everybody on a weekly basis. And I know um, Amy, our, you know, our senior coordinator certainly creates a newsletter that goes in the mail every right. month. And, and, uh, and right. it, it, it's great, but it's not the same as that right. document that is circulated far and wide. So there is that new newspaper, the um, Upton Menden Free Press. Right. And I know that there were a number of uh, articles and letters in that, but I don't know whether that has the readership yet that the town crier had because it's less well established. It's only monthly. Only monthly is also oh. a good point. I, I mean, it's a points well made. Maybe we consider in our goals and objectives to yes look at our communication opportunities. I'm definitely open to that. So sure. so yes, thank you for thank you for that input, and we'll we'll you know we definitely. Recognize that there's room for improvement. Yes. Okay. Oh, I see. As on cable, I I don't know what the so logistics of that are. The limitation is the resource, the person resource to run the system and do yeah. all. Mm. The you, you know, this it would be something. This certainly is is money. There was money in the cable contract, but that's been renegotiated over the years and, and it probably would be something for the new town administrator to revisit because certainly we could go to both uh, Xfinity and Verizon and uh, and ask for that because it would be great if they'd actually provide some funding because if we had somebody that could staff it, then we could put it on the television. But what but, but, I see problematic about that, maybe not problematic is if if people people have the ability to get Xfinity or or Verizon, you know, on their television, they should be able to to stream Teams in on it too. But maybe there's a way for us to meld the two and send it in there so they know they could go to a particular station and they could watch watch it live. And that might increase it, but I'm I'm not sure. 
Great. So, so I appreciate all the input on communication. Definitely, it is relevant to this project. But let's sort of okay. back to the senior and community community center project. Uh, and the question is: so it sounds like the board is in favor of continuing this project. Um, and the question is whether like, whether we need to have a vote or whether uh, it just can continue based on. I don't know that there was say an expiration date on that committee. But if anyone knows no, that, differently, you so you set it up. We put them in place to till completion of precision. Okay. Yeah, just, so they dissolve till the so, project's done. <clears throat> so it sounds like we are not going to let it dissolve. Right. <laughs> right. And it sounds like we have support from the select board. Unanimous. So it sounds like it. I don't know if we want to vote on that support. So, so do you want to see us come back with proposals on? Where we think the direction should be after we do our research um, onto the no votes and hold some open meetings and try to figure out where our next avenue yeah. should be. Do you want a few options? I think a big piece of it is to circle back with with town council and the town clerk to find right. out about the the legal. So problem. we have, we have started that process. So we had a, a meeting with town council where we worked through a number of options related to um, town elections. Uh, and um, you know some of which involved uh, further town meeting vote. There there are some options that use the existing town meeting vote from May, but the time time frame is much tighter. Um, I think it's like a September fifteenth yeah. deadline um, if we wanted to have a vote for that. So and we've also been uh, Phil has been in communication with the town clerk about costs associated with special elections. But we still do have some open questions with town council about some of the costs of uh, piggybacking on a, a planned uh, state election and what what the uh, requirements are for that. So, um, Mike, do you have any since you sort of compiled? Well, I mean, I think you. In addition to alternatives of what the design might be, or what, you, what Chief Kersey was talking about, I think understanding. Timing, so you, you really got, you know, September, November, and uh, oh, the next annual town meeting as sort of <clears throat> planned um, elections and or town meetings that you could piggyback. But you always have the option of doing a special town meeting and a special election specific to this um, project anywhere within that time frame. So I think in addition to what the new proposal might look like, what the options are, also understanding from a timing standpoint. What the committee feels like they want to target. Um, that might be sooner than later if you're thinking September. Yeah, I think it's sooner. If it's later. November, we need to have uh, state to approve questions by August 7th, I think. Yeah, so this in, yeah. And approved. yeah, on this chart, yeah, it's yeah. outlined pretty well what we need from a time frame. Right. That's pretty clear. I would promote when you come back, I would promote that meeting to the public as something that they can watch or participate in. That's a that's a good way to get both, you know, use our platform here to get people more involved or at least focus on the fact that it's occurring. And it piggyback on the idea about uh, you know our our public channel on cable, we would to plan a particular meeting where we could lay all this out. Yes. And record it. True. Uh, we could actually just like it's it's on YouTube. We could actually go to the cable to the two different cable outfits and actually broadcast it in rotation. Yep. Right. So the people that wanted could watch it there. So that would just give one more outlet right. for people to watch. Um, as a matter point. of fact, I think there may even be a way to people watch that on demand even, which is I mean, if you don't have the Internet, you need it. It would just be one more way to. We to used that during our information meetings before and we it did. was pretty effective. So I think uh, I think I want to move things along. We have a lot of other items on the agenda. So I think uh, it sounds like the board is committed to having the, this project ex exploration of this project continue by way of continuing this committee. And we're going to ask the committee to come back with some potential new proposals. Um, and we will continue to be in contact with the town clerk and town council about what the options are. Mike, you had yeah, just additional the only thoughts? Thing, since we did vote on this first time, Elaine and I um, swapped roles. So uh, we've talked about potentially swapping yeah. roles, right? Uh, that's a good point. So that I, so that Mike Goddard would be the the 
happen. Primary. primary voting select board member of that committee, and I would be the alternate, uh, just with my new new role of chair. I, I needed to vote that. So ah, that's true. First we, time we did. Question: Should we vote that? Yeah. How'd you do it the first time? We uh we voted. I think when we voted, I think we did say like we used the words primary and Mike and. Right. Yeah. 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 We so, can revisit it at the next meeting if we feel we sure. have yeah, to well, vote I, it. I think I think we should because it's not posted as a vote. So we should right. put it on the agenda for next time for a vote. Yeah. And I'm the alternate, so if she doesn't show up, I can vote. See that's true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that one, final, one thing for the next meeting, as we explore options, if we want to do this aggressively, we're going to also need additional dollars for redesign. So I would like the board to consider that as you look at different expenses coming up this year soon uh, to get an architect involved will probably be uh, the rough estimate Mike's given to me uh, via email is uh, up uh, up to ten thousand dollars depending on how much time usage so you need to have that in your quill so when we come back okay so maybe looking for that right and, and so if you can have a the specific number in mind at that time and perhaps this could be filtered through the capital planning uh, working group potentially also. I'm not sure and I think which, should, which is later on the agenda. Yeah, bring that to the finance director because given the dollar amount and we just see if we can find the sourcing somewhere. Okay. If not now, we could always do it. Yeah, special on the phone. Can I just a quick question? How often what cadence would the this building committee want to meet with us? If communications a key, I think minimally monthly. So one hour, two okay. meetings a month. Right. Well, you guys meet twice a month. So one hour, two meetings every week recently. So, <laughs> well, we, we, I mean, I, I'm just wanting to get a feel for it. So once a month, we can see how it works with the agendas. And sure. Maybe it's, it's every other why month. Don't yeah. we, why don't we? Yeah. But it's the, 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 we, if we go November. That's not too many meetings. If, if, we're, if we're looking for the time frame, of, yeah. an aggressive time frame, which also reduces inflation cost, which is another consideration. We go to next year. We've added another. 8% cost on whatever we reduce. So we're back to where we were. Yeah. So why don't we plan on inviting you back in July? Um, I think you'd be ready by then. We will be ready. We'll we, can, ready. You could, we can at least have an update of the project. I think it's it front and center. Um, I don't think we'll have all the things solved. Right. By July, but I think to get the visibility. To get the communications to get the new person on board potentially. Up to speed, this is a great form to do it. So it's the third or the 17th. Oh, well, yeah, we'll be talking about, uh, Whenever. yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll get there. We might, we might need yep. to do Every some adjustment of, of uh, meeting, you know, I mean, yeah. I, just meeting more frequently. More frequently. Yes. More frequently. We'll, we'll, uh, yeah, more rather we'll be in touch. We'll have you back soon. Thank you. We'll continue our work. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you, you so much. All right, uh, so next up on the agenda is a colonial power and energy committee, the municipal power aggregation next steps. We have some people here for that. A lot of people here for that. Thank you. All right, so uh, if you could please introduce yourselves. See, how about actually, Anne? Why don't you start? <laughs> but I'm Anne Mazar, and I'm chair of the Land Use Energy Committee. I'm Carolyn Barthol, member, uh, an alternate member of the Land Use and Energy Committee. Mark Capadona, Colonial Power. Denise Allard, Colonial Power. Joseph Capadona, Colonial Power. Thank you for joining us. Do you have a presentation for us? Um, do you? You have something that looks like this in your packets. Okay, so so we're here about the electric municipal aggregation program. I think we've been in front of you a couple times over the past few months. The last time the ask was about some specific product offerings that the DPU was requesting the town make a decision on, so we could submit a compliance filing on the town's behalf in in a hope to get an order more expeditiously. The town made a decision. We submitted a compliance filing and the town received an approval order to move forward and go out in the marketplace to solicit pricing for its residents and launch the program. So that's great news. Congratulations. <laughs> Four years and you're <laughs> <Thank> you. <laughs> so it's, it's hard work and a lot of effort. 
man, man's team. So, um, so I think we want to talk about timing and next steps and when we can conceivably launch when the town is comfortable launching. Um, from a logistical standpoint, the soonest you, the town could launch is with its September meter reads. Now I know that's a couple of months off. I just want to mention that we have to look at pricing and everything to, first and make sure that the market supports that. But that would be the soonest because there's a mailing that needs to go out that gives folks a 30 day opt out period before being enrolled. So what that timeline would look like is um, we'd launch in September. The mailing would need to be out by mid July to give that 30 day window and then a two week buffer for the supplier to enroll with the utility. And then um, so that would backing up from there, the town would be looking at signing something by the end of June. OK, I realize we're at the beginning That's of June. The date that the um, electric company like that fall date that they switch their rates. Does right. that have anything? to do? So uh, in the past, the, in the national grid, it was always November one and May one when the rates switched. The winter higher rates were in November one and then May one was the summer, the lower rates. But last year, the DPU issued an order where all the utilities had to switch to August one and Feb one. OK, OK, so national grid goes out to bid on June 12th for their August one rate. So we don't know it yet. Um, they'll probably file within five to six days at the DPU and then we'll know that rate. So we, I hope you don't mind, took the liter liberty of getting the town's utility data from National Grid. We already sent it out to the supply community just so they could load their stacks. So they were ready. We didn't know which way you were going to go. Um, they have an RFP. They're prepared to give the town indicative pricing, which is informational only pricing, on Monday, June 17th. They need about two weeks. We can talk about how you want to do you want us to come back? Do you want to have a Zoom call with some specific people to review that pricing and then make a decision? Because after indicative, it's informational only, we would be looking to move to executable pricing, which is actionable. And again, a contract would need to be signed by the end of June in order to launch in September. Now, if you were more comfortable with an October start, we that all gets pushed back a month. Again, we haven't seen pricing, so this is dependent on what comes back. And the one thing I want to say yeah. is, just because we move to executable pricing doesn't mean that you execute pricing. If for some reason we don't like the pricing for any reason, <laughs> then we don't do anything and we'll just kick the, kick the can down the road. If pricing came in over what um, National Grid's basic service rate was, we're not going to be moving forward. To be clear, all of this that we've been discussing from the very beginning just gives more options to all the consumers in town. This doesn't lock anybody in or limit anybody's ability. This is just something that's providing another service, another option, another choice. That is correct. 100 percent. The, the, the town likely, is likely to be a uh, better price choice as well as as well as a greener energy choice. So both of those things. That's for sure. <laughs> so at this point, do we need so do we need to take a, a vote to allow you to move to the next step to continue this process or can we just you just continue to march? We, we can continue to march. We are going to need probably to identify a signatory for if you do decide to move to exec executable pricing by June 30th, someone will need to sign up. So pricing comes in at about 11 o'clock in the morning. Um, it's a market, right? So we need, would need a signature by about 2.30, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Obviously, we'd have that dry run with the indicatives. So you'd be familiar with the matrix in, and what you're looking at. In other, in other um, processes like this, there's documentation we have to have identified ahead of time. So we knew who the signatory is. Typically, it would be the chair okay. or the or the town administrator. But is is there a document that needs to be processed ahead of time, or do we just not from the DPU standpoint? Whatever you need to do at the town to make it is is all that's required. But nothing from the aggregation or the state side. Yeah. What's the time frame from uh, like that June seventeenth date to the solid pricing? Is that another two weeks? We can get it at any time after that. Oh, okay, get, so it's like we can say. You. Refresh pricing oh. tomorrow, make it executable. Probably two days, I'd say, give the suppliers two days. <laughs> My recommendation would be based on everything that we've done, knowing this is just another choice, that, you know, it would be the, the, the chair, Elena Rugos, who would, I would send it to the chair and the vice chair so that uh, in the absence of one, the other one can sign it. So when it comes out, I know time is of the essence when that happens, right. you'd be able to send it to them and they would be able to electronically sign it and send it back to you so that you could execute. And does everybody agree that, that, that as soon as possible because it's been four years or because <laughs> I think, yeah, I, I guess I was wondering, Anne, do you have thoughts? What what are your hopes for this? Since I know actually Anne and Carolyn, since you've been in on this for so long, what are your hopes for our timeline? 
I would say as soon as we can move forward. Okay. Yeah. And I would take the recommendation of colonial power, you know, if they mm -hmm. think the pricing is good. And I would just say there's no harm in getting pricing for September. And if you don't like what you see, we can always push it out. But if you do see something favorable, you're in a position to act. So yeah, that sounds, sounds good. We, we can. Everybody. So it's the side of a question. Sure. So if we don't like the original proposal. Yeah. By pushing it, can we just can we just periodically ask you, could you check this out, please? Absolutely. And so it's a market. The pricing is going to change every day, depending on, you know, it might change a couple of mills. It might change a half a penny, depending on what happens in the market. But yes, once you're loaded at the supplier, you can refresh at any time and keep checking. Not a problem. Within a day or two. Sure. Right. Okay. Yeah. No, no, I, yeah. I, get it. I just don't it's want not, to. It's not instantaneous. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Informational pricing is easier get, to get than executable pricing because the suppliers have to get sign offs internally to make it ex executable. But yeah. certainly we can start the process for, you know, the end of the end of June and then see where we are. And so we don't get our hands slapped uh, for <laughs> saying no. No. And we want to be able to agree a little bit right. okay. about yeah. is there an yeah. Right. I, I don't know right. how you okay. can determine okay. whether there is a potential. Yes. If there's some okay. development down the line that would help improve the pricing. Well, we'd leave that to you right. to so, make that decision, that, yeah, right? If, yes. if you looked at the September price and you just knew that it wasn't uh, beneficial to us, then you just pass on. That's exactly correct. And if, it, and if we do accept it in in September, and there's a new one that comes out in October, can we retool, or or, re, or do we once we strike, we're stuck with that for a while? That, that's correct. How long? It would depend on the term, whether it was a twelve, a twenty-four, thirty-six. That, that's what it would. We're that's going to show you six through thirty-six, every six month increments, and kind of walk you through all that, and you know, get comfortable with how long you want to sign for based on what we see, you know, on the future. But again, it's not locking us in. It's just another option. Yes, that is correct. No one will be locked in. You can leave at any time. Come back at any time. It's an opt out. So everyone's basic service customers. You're all going to get mailed to. If you don't opt out in 30 days, you're going to be enrolled. But the next month you can opt out, you know, and obviously you're going to launch under the basic service rate. So you're not going to financially harm anybody in, in that first month. If they don't get their postcard back in 30 days, but they can come and go in the future. No fee, no penalty. And so I guess uh, what what would you need from us at this point to to make this happen in the faster time frame that we've talked about? I think we get, we'll just get the pricing on the 17th and we'll circulate it to, to you know, we can get email addresses from Anna. We can circulate yes. it. We can maybe put um, a Zoom together or to, rev okay. to review the pricing for the indicative and then. And our um, yep. esteemed uh, interim okay. town administrator lets us know uh, that, you know, because of the time frame, it is best not to go directly through him because so so to go through Anne and she can filter it to sure. whichever of us. I'm also going to be traveling, so I don't want my travel to interfere with the, you know, this rapid sign off that needs to happen. But so if yeah. if Brendan is around to sign, um, so we just we want to make sure we get all the logistics covered. Sure. But it sounds like the board is all in favor. I, I don't know. Are people in favor of moving forward quickly? Does anyone have any concerns about moving forward quickly? It's not a concern. Uh, it's do we need to establish this evening what the process is and who actually signs? No, nope, we've already done all of that. Okay. And the process of the chair signing those type of documents. Right. That's why we've been doing it because it's been a couple of other times when that's happened and, and we've just discussed it and moved forward. Right. So, so okay. chair or vice chair, it sounds like so. Would you yeah. be able to provide it, not tonight, but more information on the ongoing service as well? So how, how when it says you'll manage opt ins and opt outs in the future, just more detail around that should be part of the communication to the town. Right. That's, that'll be the question. If I go in now, how do I get out? Yeah, and that so there's that, there's a letter that's going to go out and it's kind of DPU mandated the language, but it has all the details on there. There's a postcard in there with a postage paid envelope. It'll have a phone. That's for the original opt out. Yep. And then we're like going to give you the ongoing. Yep. Is more, so is there a web? You know, how do yeah. you initiate that? Website, that phone to number. And we're going to give you like we're going to have information mm -hmm. sessions. Senior center, come back here wherever you know we can do Q and A's at here night, afternoon, whatever makes sense. Um, press release. We're going to give you public notices in language. Post on the website and push out. And every single piece will have our contact people can call us with questions website there's a simple opt-in opt-out form you just need to have your bill and we have previously minutes. discussed putting that up on the town web page yeah so the link will be right there so right over to us right to, correct 
bendinma.gov, mm -hmm. and it'll be on there on the bulletin board so that people we would find a link and click and do what they need. Go right over. all the questions answered that Mike got. Yes. I think it'd be a good idea to put an article in the free press also. Just okay. another. So who, like, would would you be able to do that? At, like, I on behalf of the land yeah. use or yeah, we coordinate can, with we them? We can give okay, you draft I, language and you can augment it as you see fit. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Wonderful. So uh, both um, citizens that are on um, competitive power plants right now, do they get notified at all? Or? They won't get the letter because they've already made a choice, right. so we don't want to slam anyone, but they can opt in. Okay. So we will give you, there will be language that we give you that tells people if they're already on a third party supply, if they want to opt in, they just need to check their contract terms and make sure there isn't an early termination fee. Right. We don't want anyone to get hit with a hundred dollars. Might be financially sound to actually get, depending on what rate they're paying, but um, we will include that in our information okay. so folks Perfect. know, but they won't get the mailer. Okay. So I just wanted to let you know, not today, but the whole process has changed at the department sometime in the future. In a very near future, I'm saying to you later this summer, we may have access to those accounts and we may be able to send an informational mailing. Hey, here's the town. This is its rate. You're on competitive supply. Take a look. Yeah, but we would not right. be able to send them an opt out notice. Right. Okay. Just just want to let you know we're hopeful that things are moving very swiftly. So, yeah, that's not a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just I wanted you to know that, that right now we're not allowed to, but hopefully. That's a big people say I didn't get informed, you know, I didn't exactly. Right. Yeah. Yep. And I, yeah, I want to just. Remind people, uh, I don't I remember seeing a letter over a year ago of somebody complaining that Menden had not had this option yet. It, and, you know, so it's wonderful that we are finally able going, uh, finally able to offer this uh, to the town. Um, so I think this is this is really excellent news and, you know, both for the financial savings and also for the, the green energy. Um, so I think um, thank you for this. For this work for pushing through i know there were legend there were challenges so <laughs> so thank you for for bringing this forward and um yeah i i'm looking forward to people being able to save money and having that green energy win-win well, thank you for coming all right thank, thank you thank you so much guys thank you we appreciate have a good it evening. Right. Oh. <laughs> thank you so much. okay so next up i think ann is not Going anywhere, right? You're, so item nine is about uh, the Metacomet Land Trust. So uh, there is a conservation restriction for the Vandersloos property. Uh, and also welcome Lisa Mazinski. So Thank you. actually, if you could uh, introduce yourselves, actually, I just said your name, but could, if you could introduce yourself. Thank you, Chairwoman. Uh, Lisa Mazinski, president of the Metacomet Land Trust. We have and might as well introduce yourself again in this context. And, and Mace, our community preservation committee chair. Okay. <laughs> so go ahead. So thank you for having us tonight. Um, uh, hopefully, you have this in your packet that there is a conservation restriction that we are in the very final stages of finalizing with the state in their review process. And um, what we're looking for tonight is any questions you might have and then some um, clarity on the best way to proceed because the um, time frame is very tight. We need to have the um, executed uh, restriction in front of the Secretary of Energy and Environmental Affairs by before the 25th of this month. So we've been working diligently with uh, folks um, on the uh, Community Preservation Committee, the Lands Committee, and uh, the Conservation Commission. We've been very diligent in looking over the details of this restriction and um, giving feedback and supplying us with um, great ideas on where to make it most flexible in the context of working with the folks who still and will own this property. So um, I'm happy to entertain any questions or tell you more about it, uh, of course, uh, last November you voted to support this restriction and a grant that um, that's the deadline that's driving this uh, matching the grant, the grant the... deadline. OK, so yes. so if we miss this, then it's it's not there. It, what's that? It, 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 it's it's okay. dead. Yeah, it's dead. It's OK, dead. yeah, so we don't want to miss this because this is what the the town voted to support this conservation restriction. So, so can we start with making the, the motion is written up here and discuss it? Uh, so. 
we could. I think, I mean, I have some further discussion points, which is, I think that it's still somewhat uh, a draft. There's finalized with the Conservation Commission. So we're still waiting for the final comments back from the state. Okay. And what I wanted to do here tonight is find out if there are any questions from the select board because of the tight time frame. And then the Conservation Commission is expected to meet on the 13th. And then I just um, saw that you also have another meeting scheduled for the 19th, I well, believe. That, we have to talk about that because it turns out that's a holiday. So that's true. So we're, we we uh, so again, this is we will have another meeting, but we don't know. This is really we critical. Haven't talked yet about the time frame. So, so I am is open. A vote, is a vote actually required by us, or it's just information? A we, vote is actually required. So, and that's the, so that's right. the motion. And yes. the majority yes. of of you have to actually sign this as well. Okay. There's a signature page. So, I mean, I, yeah, so I guess I would in entertain that uh, motion. Can I just ask if, uh, what happens uh, at the conservation committee and if they like vote not to recommend it or vote against it? It's still dead. Yes, but okay. they've been so supportive all the way through the process. Vote. Yes. So and I know, Greg, you had some thoughts about how to move forward in this in this time frame with the, you know, whether we. I guess whether the motion, I mean, the motion as written, I think is required. Is that OK? But I think it's with that understanding that it is a. It is still subject to being um, finalized. It's um, so I don't know if there's a way to adjust the word. Yes, Anne. It's the conservation restriction is like 99.9% .9 done. There are right. like little tweaks. Okay. So what I would like to see, and I don't see if this makes sense, Greg, but have you vote tonight that you support it? And then you'd have to come back to the town hall at some point to sign it because it has to be notarized. Okay. And then any changes that are from this document, Lisa could note. But it's really down to housekeeping in the state, just kind of going back and forth, back and forth. And because I'm worried that you're not going to meet again and we won't get right. a vote. And right. I might think we have to meet again. Hmm? What's that? We just, I, I'm not comfortable voting on something that's done. That's not right. done. Because mm -hmm. this here says I vote to approve the conservation right. restriction and easement, but that's not done yet. No, I'd rather I'd rather spe have a special board meeting. Right, meet and I'm people. I'm open. Yes. I'm open to having yeah a meeting, especially we could do it full remote just to decide on it because we oh, need North to be there to sign it, but we could each sign on our own time. Just, I, I just what I'm interested in to Mike's point, you know, this motion is I move to approve the conservation restriction and easement for the premises, but that conservation restriction and easement is 99% done, but it's not done. Mm -hmm. So I, we right. can't really make a motion right. to support something until oh, it's yeah. actually okay. I, I see a place it. for us to, mo to, to right. vote. I see a hand Carl from is. Carl. So, Carl, please uh, give us your yes. two cents. Are, am I on? Is my audio yep. on? Yep, you're yeah. good, Carl. Okay. Yes, this is on. This will be on the agenda for our meeting uh, a week from tomorrow, next Thursday. Uh, I expect that the Conservation Commission will approve a document that has been completed and drafted. Uh, I'm participating in the email chain that's between Metacomet and the person at the state who's helping us with the contract language. And yeah, it's 99% done, but it's not complete. So uh, I would I would recommend that the select board wait until at least after the contract is complete. And uh, also you can see if, uh, if, if, if it's possible if you would wait until after the CONCOM meeting uh, to see if people on that commission had any issues. We use a 10. Could we post for post the, the CONCOM? Mm. Right. Post for that, that, we can well, so that is the CMRPC uh, event, so uh, oh. evening. So that might be um, tricky for, for some. I know I've committed to going. Brendan has. I, so I don't know how late that goes, but. Uh, CONCOM meets at, starts at 7. Starts at seven, but I mean the the CMRPC event. Um, but I'm I mean we certainly could post it for later. I know, like especially if it's a full remote meeting, if we did that, you know, eight thirty at night, for example. Or would um, it work if it was a bit earlier? Or we could. What's that? Would it work if it was a like if the conservation commission started at six thirty? Well, I think the issue is that uh, I think the. 
the, an awards dinner. It's an awards dinner. It's for um, relating to the master plan. So mm -hmm. it's. I think it, the dinner starts at seven. I think the awards are before then. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's probably a, and I don't know what the. Um, it might be noisy. It might be. It might be no. challenging. No. Yeah. I mean, I'm open to a Friday. Uh, the other thing is cheating. Go ahead. Yeah. Without us. Well, I don't know. I, I I think. Were you going to CMRPC? I, I, I think so. Okay. Oh, okay. So it's actually for mm -hmm. the CMRPC. <laughs> so I mean, but I would be I would be open to having a meeting on uh, Friday. The 14th, certainly, especially if it's a full remote meeting where we're just voting to approve something. So um, I don't know. Be, I'll be away that weekend. But Will you be away, but able to to join a remote meeting? No, the 14th is my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> OK, I don't work on my birthday. Oh, happy birthday. Thank you. OK. Even though it's so, I was super hesitant to put that on a recording, but there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, I would be open to having a remote meeting on the weekend as well. I mean, it's, so like if sorry. the time frame is very oh, tight, but so it's a, it's a majority right, of the board. Right, but you don't all have to. No, have to it's a majority of the board. That's true. We could do it without yes. Jason. And okay. I'll, be at the, I'll, I'll probably be at the con So on the list. Okay. Okay. So we will. So. I think we are agreed that we will find a time when a quorum of us can meet to vote on this and give time to individually sign this. Um, so well, as soon as you are, as soon as you're able to vote on it, I will deliver it to the clerk okay. and then you can. We'll Thank make you. sure you know that it's there and and it needs to be notarized. Also, you said and the clerk okay. can do that. What's your deadline again? Um, the 24th, basically, because we need to have it on our desk the 25th. And I know I, I'm traveling the night of the 17th, so I would like to ha be able to sign this before I get on an airplane. <laughs> sure. Um, so who, who's, who's yet to sign off? I mean, did, is, is town council involved in this as well? Mm -hmm. She has been uh, she has been looking at it. Oh. So like, I think so do yeah. we, I mean, we probably want to check all the boxes, right? So I'd expect right that. Concom signed off on it. Your the state signed off, or you've signed. You're comfortable so, with it, and town council's right comfortable with it before we see it, right? Conservation has to sign off on it. The land trust, um, the board, and then it goes to the secretary. The back and forth now with the state is to finalize the language. Correct. So somebody at the state has to be comfortable with the language you're going to put forward to the concom, right, for their right. approval. Pat Karras has to approve it. Right for town council, yep. then I would expect to see it in that some order. I'd want to see both those parties agree to it before I see it again. Because I I read it, and I'm like, there's a lot of stuff here. I'm not sure I quite understand. No, I appreciate so, that. You know. Yeah, and and that's our struggle sometimes with the state because it's it's some of it's their template and yeah. it's legalese, and even trying to can to uh, explain it to the owners and participants is very difficult. So. Since the CONCOM is responsible for helping with enforcement of any violations of the CR, I have been spending a lot of time reading the paperwork. And the goal that Ann and I have been doing is we learned some hard lessons from previous CRs in town, and we're making sure to cover all the bases that we will not have any future issues with this property. That is why Thank I want to sign up first. Yes, and and if and if necessary, I will call an off-cycle concom meeting to get people the signature signatures the same as you're offering to do for the select board. So, uh, so Carl, when 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 do, do you see the earliest your the concom would be able to sign off on this? Is it do do you see it possible before the thirteenth? Um, I don't see I. I a week from tomorrow is enough lead time uh, that gives the state uh, and Metacomet to finish up the last minute details and it gives Karis a couple business days to review it as town council. And then she can, we can come in with the CR to the CONCOM meeting saying approved by Metacomet, approved by the, sec the appropriate state agency, approved by town council. Then CONCOM signs off on it and then it would come to you. All right. And then so once once we find a time when we can vote on it, which we will 
establish. Mm -hmm. So then you would be bringing physical copies to town hall. So town hall would need to be open. So if we voted, for example, on a Friday evening, town hall would not be open until Monday. Until Monday. So we would be talking about bringing it Monday. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think, I mean, I think I would appreciate it. I mean, if, if my physical signature is going to be on it, it needs to be by Monday. Um, but I think that we like as a board, it sounds like we can agree that we will we will make it happen. We're gonna be set. Okay. So, um, sure. right now it's the state, right? Is that what you're waiting for? On is the state Correct. of Massachusetts. You're waiting for the, them to get back at the language to right. Division of Conservation uh, DCR has a review process before they release it to for signatures, and that's all we're dealing with. Do you right expect now. it to be done shortly? Yes. <laughs> the person we're working with has about 50, 60 CRs, but since we have this hard deadline of the 20 of the end of the month, she, she's working very closely with us. Okay. That's great to hear. Yeah. Okay. They know that has to happen. And so we're pushing them and. Okay. Awesome. Now it just. You said you need the majority of our signatures. So if it, if something goes wrong and it's not available by the time I fly away, do, is it still. Is it enough for the other four to sign it? And does it need to be a wet signature or can it be electronic? It has to be wet signature. So and it has to it the majority of the board would have to vote. Would have to vote. Okay. Right. And right. then whoever was present or whoever voted has to sign has to the sign document. it. Okay. Right. Okay. So mm -hmm. I'm sorry, you you are in a notary. Is it notice all these signatures need to be notarized? Right. So our town our town I believe clerk that, is a, a notary, so and there's one at Dean Bank, so. So yeah, and I have a question. So if four people vote, right? Yes, right. All four have to sign. Correct. It has to so, be the same people voting as signing. So I think we have to consider that when we schedule the meeting. Um, that I guess if if it doesn't look like we can get it signed before I leave, then I shouldn't vote. Never. Seriously, so the people who vote have to sign, or just just because normally it's just a majority of the board, right. and then the board needs to to you know affirm uh, that right that and accepted. and maybe we can we can put this question to town council as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we just want the logistics. Right, so, right. it's just yeah, it it is the timing is tricky for multiple reasons. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, We've, I'm willing to meet at Saturday on. A I'm, I'm willing to meet on a Saturday. Yeah, uh, I'm willing to come in on a <laughs> Monday before I go to the time. airport. Yeah, <laughs> I will drive around a piece of paper if t around town <laughs> if needed. Uh, but you'd have yeah. to drive around a notary as well. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> no, that's why it's easier to come. Yes, to exactly. Come here. Right, so, like Carl, you'd have to have your like a, a notary mobile truck with you. So, <laughs> um, but I think you know. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Is it, we the undersigned being a majority of the select board. Oh, okay. Hereby certify that at a public meeting, the select board voted to approve. Okay. So you could vote, I guess. It, and, uh, right. As long as we have. Okay. Okay. As long Good. as there are three of you. Okay. Signing. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, we'll make it happen. And I think uh, by the end of tonight, I expect that we will decide on when we're meeting. We might, once we talk through our future meetings, we may sort of be able to figure that out, but it will, I would say it will, we expect it will be before Monday, June 17th. Sure. And I'll stay in touch with Greg and. Um, now that we're done with the logistics last call, are there any, you know, general questions or anything you'd like to ask or I know you're all pretty familiar with the, with the property and everything. So. Right. Yes, because we're not hoping we're we're not expecting to have a lot of discussion when we meet to vote right. on it. We're expecting to have heard from all of the the experts yep. on it and then we can we can vote on it without much additional discussion. The town's people already approved it. It's right. clearly wanted so excellent. Okay. Well thank you so much for your time. All right. Thank, thank you, you for your time. Thank you for everything we do. <laughs> thank you for being flexible. I appreciate it. Oh and if I could take just one more moment. Sure. It's been great to work with the town boards and committees. So you should really appreciate the work everybody's put in. Yeah. Okay. We do. Yeah, we do you. really appreciate. Yes. Thank you. Well, yes. Several times. Thank yep. you. We're getting there. Inch by inch. Thank okay. you. <laughs> and thank you, Carl. Yes. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Carl.
Thanks, Lisa. Thanks, Anne. And then, Anne, I'd like to welcome you back <laughs> for our next agenda item, uh, which is uh, the land grant discussion, um, the approval and appointment of a project manager. Uh, so, go ahead. Is so, it, sorry, is this in the con this is in the context of the, the community preservation mm -hmm. committee? Okay. Yep. And this is for the Denton property, which is on Thayer Road. And we voted to um, spend 500,000 on with CPA funds. We have 200,000 from Audubon, 600,000 from the Nature Conservancy. And, and then the other 500,000 we want to get from the land bank, which I feel really positive on because we have so much support and it's a really important habitat. And the state's gone there and looked at it and they really liked what they saw. But as part of the grant, there's all these documentation and letters and things. And so this would be saying that if we get the grant, I would be the um, manager. And it also says that you're giving um, the town says, yes, we can apply for this grant. OK, and can you just remind us which which of the grants this is, which which organization? Is um, it it's with? a state organization. State, state yes. Grant. OK, yeah, thank you. And it's a matching. Grant. OK, and so. We put in 500,000 CPA, right? And then that's what we're asking for. Okay. So the money that we voted to put in at the at the town meeting was essentially to match this grant in order. And in order to get this grant, we need to take care of the administrative parts of it by like uh, appointing a project manager. Is that yeah. correct? Okay. Mm -hmm. And saying that it's that you're giving you know the legal authority that we can apply for the grant. Okay. Is there uh, are there questions for Anne about this? I think I've seen the letter and it's essentially this text with the authorization to um, appoint Anne Mazar as the project manager. Um, I think it was not in the packet, but uh, I'm happy to share it. Like the letter, it looks like it's from the select board chair and it basically says, I authorize the appointment of Anne Mazar. Actually, I could read it. Yeah, why don't you do that? And it's also though we, we need a vote though. Yes, yep. yes, we we have that, but just to uh, let's see. So the letter is uh, from the chair uh, to Vanessa Farney, the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs, 100 Cambridge Street um, in Boston. Uh, so dear Vanessa Farney, on behalf of the Mendon Select Board, I fully support the land grant application for the 201 acre plus or minus uh, Denton property off Thayer Road. The select board voted on June 5th, 2024, and then it has the text of the motion as it's uh, printed in your motion packet, but I'll read that here. Uh, to support the purchase of a permanent conservation restriction for conservation, agriculture, and or passive recreation purposes on a 201 plus or minus acre property located at 30, 34, 36, and 46 Thayer Road and 192 Providence Street, as seen on the Mendon Tax Maps 23 227-30, 23-227-34, 23-227-36, 23-227-46, and 28 dash 206-192 for the Mendon Oak and Wall Farm Preserve Project. Furthermore, if the Mendon Oak and Wall Farm Preserve Project is selected for a land grant, Anne Mazar will be the land grant project manager and she will work closely with the Mendon Conservation Commission throughout the project. Finally, we support that said conservation restriction be conveyed to the town of Mendon and the Metacomet Land Trust under the provisions of Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 184, Sections 31-33, and that the town of Mendon be authorized to enter into all agreements and execute any and all instruments as may be necessary on behalf of the town to effect said purchase or take any other action relative thereto. Sincere. Okay. All right. Second. All right, any further discussion? All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. All right. Congratulations, thank you got you. another job. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I'll, I'll send you the letter and then you can just. Okay, you'll send that on, okay. So I'll just, and does that need to be a wet signature or? No, okay. no it's an electronic okay. submission, so. Okay, great, thank you. But save the letter that you do sign just in case. Okay, so I will. I'll I'll save it. I'll upload it to SharePoint um, in our documents. So at this point, we get this. Point, once the grant's approved, it's done. 
right? Yeah. They, we won't know till late November, though. Yeah. Right. So it's you know. But we but you don't need any anything actionable from us. No. 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 It's just now it's just you and the green. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thank you okay. so much. Thank you. I think that's the last one from you on this agenda. Uh, so next up we have uh, 11 is the historic preservation restriction uh, for 13 Main Street. And I uh, I don't know if Dan is here. I don't see him. Uh, no, Dan's busy. Okay. All right. So let's see. Did we have something in the packet on this? I know I saw the yeah, emails item, about item it. Item 10, a uh, letter from the... Massachusetts Historic Commission addressed to Dan. And a copy of the, uh, the actual agreement. Scrolling down, yeah. as you know, this was a very long packet. Yeah, I, you know, I could just, does somebody have the packet? Is it, is it in the, is it in the SharePoint or was it on an email? Because so, Greg, Greg emailed it to the select board email, I believe. Was it like in the previous agenda? It was on. It was last week. Yeah, last and Thursday. Do you have the date? Yeah, last Thursday. Last Thursday. Last. I actually have the letter here. If you want me to read it, sure, that would be great. I, I'm still I, scrolling. That's right. The letter says, "Dear Mr. Byer, the Massachusetts Historical Commission (MHC) is pleased to send you the preservation restriction for the Hastings Law Office in Menden, Massachusetts, as part of the current MPPF Round 29 project, including the restriction guidelines as well as exhibits A through D, 18 pages in all." Please sign it and have your signature notarized and return the document as quickly as possible to me at MHC for approval. Once approved by our executive director, the preservation restrictions will be returned to you for recording at the appropriate registry of deeds. The MHC must have a copy of the recorded document in a file or at least a photocopy of the registry of deeds filing receipt in case that the registry is backlogged before any matching funds are released. Prompt attention to this matter can prevent later delays. Uh, if you have any questions, please contact me and follow it up by contact information. Uh, and it's signed by Ross Dakel, Preservation Planner, Massachusetts Historical Commission. Thank you. Oh. Yeah, I found it. It's last week. Yep. Yes. I, I think it's uh, 95 pages long. So <laughs> that's what I mean by like, I'm still scrolling. Um, so, uh, any other questions about this or I would be, uh, I would entertain a motion. The only question I have is do we, how did the, I know it's on infrastructure right now. How's it going? Oh, and, Greg, or do you, you want to do it? Do you know, I've not heard of any problems. Dan has been in regular communication with me and I hear the, the banging and the drilling. So I know that they're, really, <laughs> yeah, they're doing things. There is work that is ongoing up there. There's a nice sign that they've been out front. Yep. And I'm, I'm not aware of any, Problems whatsoever involving construction at this point. That's great. I know the last conversation was that there was some additional issues with the facade with the brick, brick but the architect said that you know, that's beyond the scope of what this is, but they were able to do everything that's within the scope of the project that was proposed. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So I would. I would uh, entertain a motion. I move to approve the preservation restriction agreement between the town of Menden and the Massachusetts Historical Commission for the premises located at 13 Main Street, Menden, and authorize the chair to execute the agreement on behalf of the select board. Second. Any further discussion? All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, uh, let's see. So I believe that I need to uh, go see Ellen to get that to sign that in person. I think that that said notarized also, right? Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. So next up is number twelve, uh, the Collins Center at UMass Boston. Uh, discuss, decide to execute the Collins Center organizational design study facilitation proposal, and I believe that um, we have uh, Jen O'Neill. Uh, on the on teams uh, mike goddard also knows about this project so i guess i will leave it and elena you. i also yes. um david colton is also on from the Collins center oh. if there are any oh. additional questions okay. excellent um so i know mike goddard you passed around this sure. proposal again if you could just say a few words yeah so uh, a couple doc there's, there's a document in the package which is uh one thing jen also forwarded the service agreement 
than the final proposal, which is, uh, I believe, identical to the proposal, the draft we received in April. So the focus of this discussion um, is to make a decision on how we, if we go forward, engage with the Collins Center to do this, uh, this organizational design study, which is really a uh, quick hit study to pull feedback from all the department heads and, and key stakeholders within town to understand, really do a SWOT analysis, for lack of a better term, um, and then bring to the table best practices across other municipalities we may or may not know about. The idea being we understand what our structure is, what it could be, possible roles that we don't have today that we may want to implement going forward in the future. Um, and, and so that that's sort of what we're here to talk about, but it's part of a broader discussion we've been having, which is what's in the packet. I think it's an operational framework document. It's the last document, last few pages in the packet. And that is more of a broader view of some of the things we've talked about, compensation studies, uh, staffing studies, as well as this one, uh, this piece, which is the uh, organizational design uh, discussion. So the idea being is that uh, David Colton, who actually did our highway study, uh, he's back with us if we go ahead with this to facilitate uh, the interviews across all departments to understand what works, what doesn't work, et cetera bring that back and facilitate a workshop with this board so that we can start to identify what our future state potentially looks like from an organizational structure, management, uh, span of control type of perspective and make sure we have all the roles that we need in town to you know, be as efficient as we can be. So did that include like organization change management or that's like what happens after the proposal is? This would be planning. coming back to a we would derive a recommendation to what we think it can be, but would not touch on implementation yet. Okay. Um, but it does dovetail into the broader framework. And when we think about it, if we have a new position, for instance, uh, the conservation agent, we increased to 40 hours and we talked about, well, can, can Isabella pick up uh, some of the green communities administration work? Well, maybe, but we don't actually have a job description that or a role that is that role. But I think it's this is a great idea because this needs to be done and to have a professional organization make this suggestion because we've been trying to we've been bragging ourselves towards this for a long time. Yeah. So I think this is going to be right. I, I think this is step one. Yeah. Right. And it's we've very, very so focused. So David might be getting scared as he hears me talk about comp studies well, it's, and it's <laughs> things like that. It's kind of step, uh, step one of this yeah. part, right. which is. Right. Multiple steps on the road. But the rest of that framework we won't talk about tonight because it's not really on. It's not the focus, but okay. I think it's a follow on to a future agenda topic to say, right. how do we take this forward? Yeah. So I guess uh, Jen or David, do you have anything uh, to add to what Mike said about how, what you see the process would be, the timeline you expect, for example? I think our timeline may have been pushed a little bit just because we've kind of kicked this down the road um, about a month so I'm not sure if David has an idea of, of a time I think at one point we were thinking May and June and now we're into June so possibly not May, then. yeah not May um, <laughs> and then with the new TA starting I don't know if we want to wait till he starts if we want to start the process before he comes on board and and based on what I read it looks like second week in July is is when he's possibly coming on board well, so yeah, we we still are in the process of contract yeah. negotiation, so we don't have right. We don't have an official. But that would be a great onboarding date. opportunity for a new for for right okay. for whoever we end and up to sit in and yeah. listen and talk and engage. Yeah, yeah. that's built in onboarding. So yes, but I think I mean I guess the question is if is the board I I know we've talked about it. I don't think we voted on it, and I know one question had come up is about paying for it. So. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think there's two things. One, do we agree to, we as a board should vote, decide is I think what the uh, agenda topic is, but we probably need a motion to say, yes, we want to authorize the chair to engage in the service agreement with the Collins Center to execute this study would be one decision we would make. Um, and I think we'll need to engage the finance director to make sure we properly move money to the point where we can, I think the cost is $7,500 at this point. When we put it on for the next agenda, we'll take a vote to approve it and the funding. Um, 
the same time. Well, part of me, I, I hesitate because yeah, we it was early because April it, when we got this. So right? I think so. Right. So, Mike, were you hoping that we could vote that that we want to do this sort of contingent on us finding the funding to do so? I understanding the funding is available. Right. So, okay. So, can, so contingent everything. on sort of the mechanism for right. funding this project. So I would like assuming that we will be able to right. do this, that so and it that would be like, I guess, right. It has been. We talked around for a couple of months now. What's that? We got the proposal April 5th. Right. And right. so I think we want to push this it past the time moving forward that reasons. we like it does. I mean, I'm in favor of doing this. I think we've had so many different, you know, with with the. Um, yeah, so so <laughs> so many moving parts with our organization that it would be really nice to have that big picture view. I, I think the other reason I'd probably make I, you calling it like a contingent vote, which I think we probably make sense is that it would allow we, we made we appointed Jen our point of contact to work right. with the call center. Yes, but then. If we take this vote tonight, I would think David and Jen could then more formalize a timeline. Yes. Now that we've said we want to go ahead with okay. this. Right. Assuming. Right. And yeah, Mike. You, sorry, just, did you have another point? Yeah. No, no. just I was just going to make a motion. Oh, okay. David might have a. Yeah. Yeah, David. I just want. Yeah, I just wanted to. <laughs> to uh, you know, in terms of timeline, but projects of this type, the 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 critical thing that affects the timeline the most are the interviews, right? You've got up to 12 people in the in the contract to be interviewed, scheduling, holding those interviews. Um, it can be challenging sometimes. So um, I think the sooner we get started on, um, you know, on on that, the better. If you you know, if you if you if you want to um, wrap this up in 60 to 90 days from whenever we start, if that's if that's what you're. It sounds like you were looking at a uh, two month period here to get this done. But those those interviews are going to be the are going to be the the, uh, the pressure point for the uh, for the timeline. Thank you. I make a motion that we approve the. Uh... To execute the proposal from the Collins Center Organizational Design Study at a cost of up to seventy-five. Second. I think I think it would be effectively authorizing me to sign that document. Always. Yes. Yeah, so chair. okay. All right. Uh, any further discussion? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 I suppose I should occasionally ask all opposed. I think I've heard everybody say aye, but that, you know, do let me know if somebody didn't vote. Can we, um, for the next agenda, whenever the next meeting is, add a an agenda item to make sure we confirm okay. funding from Jody, and she can kind of say, "Good to go." Making a note of that, great. Yeah, thank and you. I'll okay. reach out to David tomorrow to try to get those interviews started to scheduled. Start start scheduling the interviews. Fantastic. Um, I, especially with Jen. summer coming, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of vacations. Right. So we definitely yes. want to try to get get those yes. on the books. Jen, do we need to identify the up to 12 participants? Because they're not all department heads. So, okay. you know, like FinCom chair might be a good person to pull into the discussion, something like that. But I don't know, Jen, where your thoughts on, but you probably want to circle back and figure out who the 12 are, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I think I would, maybe David and I can have a conversation about that just because I still am, I'm still learning all the players yeah. in almost a year, but I'm still learning all the players. So I just want to make sure that we we get everybody we need. It's definitely a good idea to include some of your key uh, committee chairs um, along with department heads and and, and others. If they were, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK, great. All right. Thank you. Thank you both for joining us. And I'm, I'm glad we're going to make this happen. So, thank we you. like data. We are. Big fans of data. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us, David. Thank you. You're welcome. I look forward to hearing from you, Jennifer. All right. So, uh, moving on. Uh, so we have some uh, administrative uh, licensing type things to cover. So number thirteen, 
uh, is Joint Operations slash CP Management Services, a one day entertainment license. Are you? Oh, okay. hello. Are Welcome. You? Hello. Nice to meet you all. Nice to meet you. Thank you for joining us. No problem. So just I'm here to answer whatever questions could, you may could, have. Could you introduce yourself, please? Oh, I'm sure. My name is Dina Martin. I'm an event consultant that works for CP Management Services, and I'm helping them organize this event, among others. And there's uh, the dispensary celebrating their first anniversary week from this Saturday. Um, and it's mainly an indoor event. Predominantly, there'll be pop-up tents inside the uh, warehouse that's attached to the back of the dispensary, but there will be um, a trailer by the name of Big Bertha. It's basically just a mobile retail display that's provided by one of our vendors. It's, you know, sort of a hippie kind of, you know, visit sort of thing. And then there will be a, um, a glass blowing demonstration by a company called Witch Doctor, and they've been in touch with, I believe it's Craig Burnham from the fire department okay. to discuss that. Is that you? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I see. Okay. Um, and then the other uh, concern or the other issue I think that the board would need to be aware of is there we, we, we will have live music. As a matter of fact, I believe that the band is local. I don't know the name of it, but it's someone who's associated with the dispensary. So I think they're a homegrown talent, but there will be live music. Okay. See, that's all in the application that was yeah. submitted back in May. Right. And it looks like, uh, right, the, the date is. June 15th, which right. is coming up soon. So it is, is yeah. time sensitive. Yes. Is, does move anyone have any it. questions? Oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> move to approve an entertainment license for joint operation CP management for June 15th, 2024, between the hours of noon and 4 p.m. for the premises located at 47 Milford Street. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Did, didn't I th did we? Is this the second? thing they've done didn't they do a they like did. tents and that was recently well, wasn't recent wow i thought it was when they opened oh, when they were yeah. getting ready it just seems recent. oh okay. <laughs> really? the opening right around uh, this time last year yeah. we were also we, we submitted an application no. to do something for 420 and then ultimately decided that the weather was probably not going to you know 420. A right. cooperate with we, doing we something outdoors something for an outdoor one day <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, yeah a little too early for that yeah any any other questions all right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank, Thank you very, very much. much. Great. Thank you. Okay. Right. And then more licensing. Uh, so number 14 is JNG Motors, renewal of a class two automobile license. I move to renew the class two automobile license for JNG Motors for calendar year 2024. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, thank you. That was quick. Okay, number 15 is the Serenity House consideration of common victualler license at 4 Maple Street. I move to approve a common particular license for Senorita House. I'm not pronouncing any of this right. For the premises <laughs> located at 4 Mesa, I really apologize, Maple, Maple Street for calendar year 2024. Second. Uh, any for any discussion again? Further discussion? Any beginning discussion? Just want to welcome that new business. Ah, uh, yes, right. Yeah. This is in the location where the uh, herbs HMS. make sense. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So, oh, see, I didn't know my luck. initials. So, yeah. okay. So, new. Bye. Welcome, new business. Um, so, any other discussion? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Wonderful. And then, okay, last one is, I think you maybe all saw uh, there was an email about uh, considering a no parking sign at 7 Maple Street. Um, and I believe, uh, Greg, you followed up on this somewhat. Uh, I did. So I spoke with the chief of police who went out and met with the, uh, the resident. And uh, he talked with the DPW, uh, excuse me, highway surveyor. And uh, they have no objection to a no parking sign being positioned in that location. Be determined the exact location to be determined by the chief of police. Can I, yeah. can I just make a suggestion? I just know that people, folks have been parking. You know, there's a parking issue in the center. Yeah, it's a tough okay. issue forever. And I'm not sure putting a parking sign in front of one residence is going to create a problem. I for think it was. I thought it was in front of the crosswalk. But well, well, first of all, if it's in front of the crosswalk, you don't need. They shouldn't park. be parking there anyway. My, but my, right. my suggestion is that we just have it circle back with council, okay, to make sure because, you know, 
people can park. We've had a lot of issues with people can park with this room and, and to, to to create additional you know, hardship. Okay. Just, I mean, again, as the chief said, he has no problem doing okay. what we tell him to do. I'm just not certain that it's proper for us right. to, to do that. I mean, I'm, I'm I'm certain that there is an issue. There's always been an issue. Right. Okay. Um, I know that 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 first house right up from the block on the same side as the post office was I'm dating myself was was the home of Miss Youngson, my fifth grade elementary school teacher, and she was always concerned about people parking in front of her house. Uh, but it's right next to the post office, right. you know, wherever it is. I, I know it's problematic, but I'm, I'm not sure that how to create the solution. I just think I want to make sure that we're not. You know, making a, an error in doing this and we really have the authority to, to really say that we can put a no parking sign up in a particular area. So I just would like to circle back with them okay. and have the chief and all right. Uh, TA or whoever circle back with council. Okay. I'm, sure that. I'm, al I'm always in favor of doing things the right way. So it's I think all, that's, that's prudent. So I think we can follow up. And so we're not saying no, but we're going to uh, follow up with council, town council, and see uh, mm -hmm. see if we have any constraints on this. Okay. Any other comments or questions on this? Yeah. All right. Thank you. All right, so we are moving right along. Um, so uh, next up is number 17, a discussion about the um, CIWG, the Capital Working Group, continuation in FY25, or until a Capital Improvement Committee is formed or reformed. Um, so actually, Mike Goddard, if you speak to this, since you've been yeah, this, that I mean, charge. It was, um... The working group was set up to get us through the budget process, uh, assuming we'd have a, a committee formed. Uh, that hasn't happened, so do we want to? I've got a meeting tomorrow with this working group. Um, should I see if they're engaged for another fiscal year? I think we. I, th I think we need to. Yeah. Right. And I, I also think we need to continue it. I. I you know, at some point in the next few months, I hope that we can talk about sort of the big Trace. picture of the town boards and committees and consider when we can get up that formal capital improvement committee. Um, because I think that that has been the goal. Yeah. Um, so I think it's just it, uh, but I'm in favor. I don't want to put the brakes on because we're waiting for that to happen because we, we still need to keep having these discussions. So I, I would also say that a working group can be as many people that might show interest. So if people want to see what it's all about, right. Come okay. to the working group meetings. I mean, the committee by bylaw is going to be five member committee. Right. So, but we can have as many people participate in, in the, the working work, group. Right. As we go forward. Okay. And, that and it form. could be that, uh, if there are people who are interested in joining the working group, that they might be candidates for appointees to the official, uh, yeah. Yeah. capital capital improvement committee. So I think um yes, I don't know if we want a motion to continue that working group or if we can just again let it continue and not be dissolved. <laughs> I think it's let it continue up. It's a working group because right. it's not we, we do not post meetings. It's a right. working group. Right. So keep that level of okay. formality. Um but I just want to make sure everybody right. kind of don't want to lose the momentum. Right. That's and I I may have some uh Someone I, I may know of somebody else who might be interested in joining those discussions and maybe we will hear from others as well. Um, help us move forward. Any other comments on this one? Okay, great. All right, so then we have about 10 minutes before. Um, so uh, we were hoping to start the executive session around 830. Um, we don't have to start right then, but that was that was the goal. It, we're, we're doing pretty well. Uh, so a few of these uh, topics on here might be somewhat elastic in terms of how long they will take. I know uh, we have on here the uh, board policies and procedure, procedures manual, which um, we want to keep on the agenda in an ongoing way so that we continue to work through it. Um, we have on here the board operations assessment framework that Mike Goddard mentioned. Um, there was, sorry, I'm just going through the agenda items we have in between. So there's uh, a 
a suggestion that we consider an appointment of a select board clerk and then uh, the town administrator report. So um, I think my, I would be interested in hearing. So my hope would be since we got all, all of these time sensitive things out of the way is that we actually uh, adjourn from executive session rather than returning so that we finish up our uh, open session topics before we go into executive session. So um, I think I'd like to take things a little bit out of order and get through some of the housekeeping and see um, see how much time we have left. And then, I mean, we don't have to start the executive session right at 830, but uh, that is, it's going it, to, right, so that's going to be close. So I think, actually, I would like to uh, circle to the last item which says that the next meeting is June 19th and that of course we it's come up that uh so Jen our HR director mentioned this to me that's uh by the way that's a holiday it's Juneteenth I'm like oh I knew that uh, somehow but uh like it had not connected that that would be that would affect our meeting so town hall is probably closed that day so uh we should choose another another date for the like for the meeting. So I think that we may have an additional we're, we're expecting to have an additional out of cycle meeting about the. Um, the conservation restriction and and we expect that to be an online short thing. I'm thinking maybe 10 that one will be maybe 10 minutes, but we need to decide what to do about the uh, June. The. The meeting that we expected to have on June nineteenth, based on our um, twice, like you know, first and third Wednesday of the month cycle. Yeah, Mike. And I suggest also because the next meeting after that would be, would be uh, the day before the Fourth of July. Right. Can we just bump it a week instead of the uh, June the nineteenth? So it would be the the thirty sixth, and so, then just push off to so, the week after the Fourth of July, and just so it. You know, so we don't have June. We don't have a meeting on July 30. So the tenth. Yeah, another. So week. or or I mean, we could. I mean, we have a meeting scheduled on the 17th of July. So I guess the question is. So, Greg, you said that there is not a lot yet that is. So you said that that you haven't scheduled anything specifically for the 19th. That's right. I have a. Uh, I have at least one. Public hearing that's required for a poll location. Mm -hmm. So, depending upon what date you select, we'll schedule that. Um, the other issues are non date specific at this point. Okay. Sure. I mean, so because we could conceivably have a meeting on the 26th and then wait until the 17th. I'm open to having it more, but I don't know. It feels like all of the time sensitive things may have come today, but saying that, like, maybe there will be more that come out. <laughs> yeah. Um, Elena, Elena, yes. If you don't, if you don't mind, the sure. only thing that I am concerned about is we are trying to appoint a new executive assistant. We don't have everything uh, yes. set just yet, but perhaps okay. during your special meeting that you have, if if everything's ready, we could do that then. Right. So you mean that that where we the where when we're uh, going to vote on the conservation restriction, possibly we could also vote on an executive assistant. Is that, is that your yeah, suggestion? If, everything, if everything's ready, that would be that would be okay. great. So we're not pushing that back any further than. Okay, um, I'm definitely open to that. And you don't want to lose sight of the fact you've got a town administrator agreement that you want to sign. To. Right, so so that would be the hope that, that will you, also come up. So maybe you don't want to see expand back. from <laughs> the 10 minutes, maybe it'll be, you know, 20 minutes, depending on how, but, but I think these are all important so things that will. <laughs> I am, but hey, do you see how many items we've gone yeah. through in this time? Um, it's a robust agenda. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, so yeah, so I think I would be, so I'm going to be away. So I guess, Brendan, you would be chairing. I hope to, I hope to join remotely, but, um, but I think, you know, I'm certainly open to the 26th. Having our next meeting be to, I mean, our next sort of full meeting yep. in person hybrid meeting be on June 26. What about the, the rest of you? So Brandon, Mike. That's fine with me. Yeah, that's Jason, fine. Okay, Mike, you suggested it. So, okay. So, I think why don't we do that and then um, 
maybe we will we'll, we'll keep cycle we'll cycle back a little bit i think after we talk through some other things about when our off cycle extra meeting will be that and that may be somewhat uh depending on how some other conversations go so that we may need to decide on via email okay okay and then i guess i would ask for the town administrator reports yeah, sure uh, I see the fire chief is here, and I um, I just want to make a note that uh, he and I have been working on a bid for a uh, new fire truck. Chief, correct me, it was authorized previously by a vote of town. Yeah, there is one that we're still on the truck. Mm -hmm. it's, it's still yeah, so we, uh, we, we, uh, we worked together to put together a bid specification in record time. Uh, we uh, we advertise because we determined that it it uh, even though it's a, a lot of truck that we envision coming from another municipality, there's a in between group that's not a municipality, which means we have to go ahead and do a bid solicitation. So we make sure that we did that, and we'll uh, open the bid on the 17th, and then the chief will be back in front of you at a later meeting with a recommendation. Hopefully, it's a pretty easy recommendation. Didn't get three requests. Do you never know? So which which vehicle is this? Uh, it was the rescue one replacement. And then the, and then there was a potential. It was supposed to be a, another spell on the agreement. Oh, okay. Because they traded it and something happened. Yeah, that forced us to put it out to bed. A lot easier yeah. to buy from municipality because that's exempt from bidding. We authorized a certain amount based on the other municipality truck, right? It was just bid for that same figure. So nothing's changed financially. It was another reason for that. Well, that you got to think about outfitting and up things. Up a certain amount. Their bid's going to include that. Well, we've had conversations since that time in terms of what the it looked like very promising to be at a lower figure, so you could then take advantage to to yeah. outfit it and things like that. So if this bid, okay, and that was that was ARPA, I believe, right? Yes, yeah. I remember that. I won't talk about the executive assistant. Jen's already mentioned that we're we're uh, looking to. Get a permanent individual on board. We did do two final interviews. Uh, Jen, myself, and Chief Kersey uh, interviewed two very fine candidates. We've identified someone that we think is right for the job. We want to be able to have that person come in and meet with you, and more importantly, have this person on board and ready to go when you're a new town administrator. So. And then the only other last thing I had um, is in had some recent discussions with the town of Upton concerning shared services for building inspection services. So um, it's not going to be something that's going to happen in, in my time, but it is something that conceptually the, um, either myself or the incoming TA will ask for generally your views on that uh, conceptually. The reason why I think it's important is we have a uh, part-time building inspector right now. He's not really available to the public. I'm not making any commentary in terms of the job that he does, but part of the job is being available and being present in town hall. We have some some issues and some problems with that because he works in another municipality. The other issue is um, zoning enforcement. So right now, zoning enforcement falls upon the assistant planner, but really under the state zoning statute, it's a function of your building department or your inspection services. So if we were to um, partner with another community, we conceivably would have a half time person who would be available for 19 or 20 hours a week here in town and could assume the duties of a zoning enforcement officer, which I think there's a lot of calls and a lot of inquiries that come in about zoning violations and such. So I think it it, it is beneficial to the town to have that in mind. There is, as you said, another community that uh, due to some changes in their inspectional services is willing to perhaps partner with us. So I think it's it merits discussion going. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. And I wonder if that can be folded. That question can be folded into some extent with that Collins Center study yeah. looking at our overall I organization. I think Greg should be one of the 12 okay. <laughs> interviewed. Oh, thank you very yeah. much. Okay. Did, 
Now, did Upton approach us? Or yeah. We, we, because we, up, Upton approached us. We've had this discussion, tried to have this discussion previously, okay. so it's great. Okay. So, so well, they, they approached us, and, and I thought, again, for the reasons it was really a very fine idea, because you really want to be able to provide service to the public, mm -hmm. and this would accomplish that. So we'll we'll the gap there for sure. For we'll continue to have this conversation. So thank thank you. Is, was there anything else, Greg? Nope, was that okay. it? Okay. Um, all right. So we uh, I mean it's eight thirty. That doesn't mean we have to go right to executive session. Uh, but I so I wonder. Um, I know. So Mike, you had mentioned this other like maybe can you say like a few words about the the document that you shared, and we'll discuss it in more depth in the future. Yeah, I think the document was just sort of putting pen to paper around some of the ideas that have been discussed, whether it was here or some other um, discussions that we've been having offline. Um, so when you look at it, you're going to see sort of, uh, you'll see the, the, the column center proposal is the first thing, then there's two section, sections underneath it that are bullet out other potential deliverables in terms of compensation study, staffing studies type of thing. So we understand sort of what our, um, you know, what our uh, broader, more holistic view of the operations might need to look at. So when you think about our budget forecasting or, you know, multi-year budgeting forecasting, we can understand potential staffing needs. Um, rather than one-off, we'll have sort of a, a good sense of where we directionally want to take the operation and what it means, whether we can even do it. So I think the comp study, given you know what we hear from really almost every bargaining unit, they feel the market suggests that we might be uh, sliding in terms of competitive salaries. So that's, you know, we can break it down when you read it, break it down into different pieces. You think one piece might be more, more important to another. You know, we can be very targeted with how we go about doing it. So but I think it's a natural next step to right. what the call center is starting. Yes. And I'm, I'm hoping that we can... Uh, devote more time to this um, in the next, like perhaps at the next meeting, we can talk through this and um, start to iron out what it is that we want to do. If that is some, if, if indeed this is something that we want to do as a board, I know we've talked about it, um, but that's, you know, I'd like, I'd like to have that unless you think that we, you'd like to see us be more formal about our um, intentions to do. I would say this. that, I mean, I think that, um, I mean, I think at some point, the board as a board, we need to say yes, we want to do these things. Right. Yes. Uh, in the meantime, um, start reaching out to different places to get a sense of what something of this might look like in terms of cost, time, things like that. Is some of what we talked about here, the idea was we were going to get a permanent TA on board to start doing more of this, and of course, that process could. Yeah, slow down by six months. So. I mean, so that I mean, I, I think just one thing. The other thing is a lot of this, and I think. It's not lost on me because I've heard it from a number of people. A lot of this, we have information available to us now, so it might be also just coalescing the information we have right. yeah, available right. to us right now internally. But I think in terms of, you know, engagement with the rest of the town operations, having that third party objective view of that probably makes sense. But there's a lot of stuff we can, if we decide to do it, say in our annual goals and objectives and things like that, we could probably start to look at some specific things we would look for, say the finance director to start to coalesce around and get mm -hmm. some information. But I think um, the Jen who's still on, I mean, she's probably heard me say this, but you know, job roles, job descriptions, let's kind of make sure we have the most, the most recent copies. We know what they are and we can be very uh, formal in terms of either updating or you know, check the box saying, yeah, that is the role we need. Great, thank you. And then, uh, Brendan, uh, do you want to update us yeah, on the sure. progress and with the- I feel like all these topics are very- similar. Board policies and procedures. Dovetail together, yeah. but uh, so the updates since last week, so, or last meeting. Um, so during the last meeting, we reviewed, you know, probably for 20 minutes and I received suggestions from multiple board members. Uh, We've also I've also gotten suggestions from Greg as the MTA. Uh, so all of those have been incorporated into the latest document, which was distributed two days ago, I believe. Um, so that's kind of where we are. Uh, if moving forward, if there's any other sections we need to add or anything that's blatantly obvious, please come prepared to the next time we discuss to to give me that feedback and I can uh, incorporate that into the document. Okay. 
And I also think that with the new T, uh, TA coming on board, this would be uh, a good, a good uh, opportunity for that person to shape this document a little bit as well um, and kind of show, hey, this is the vision of kind of where we're going, uh, get everyone's consensus on that. So that's the update that I have. Thank you. And then I guess there's the the one more item on here, which was um, the possibility of considering the appointment of a select board clerk. I know, Greg, can you say a few words about yeah, this? Yeah. So I think I think the um, the clerk is important, not so much as someone who's a scribe taking the minutes, but someone that can be on top of minutes production, especially where we're going to be having new staff. And then secondly, um, looking at release of executive session minutes because the law says that at a certain point you need to review your executive session minutes and release them to the public. And then I think the third value of having um, someone as a clerk is kind of exploring the electronic medium for taking notes and minutes during the meeting. Uh, I'm not capable of doing that, but I think there are members of the board who are probably capable of doing that. And I would suggest that um, you have someone who probably could do an excellent job as being your clerk, but it's up to you as to whether you do it. I do see it um, in other communities. And again, there's some risk in terms of kind of not having our minutes up to date and, yeah. and, and having a clerk, the clerk can kind of work with staff to stay on top of that. My, my question about that is we had discussed um, using the chatbot and AI. Did your, how did that evaluation go in your, so, <laughs> so today, <laughs> uh, yeah, so, to, uh, so today uh, we actually tested out um, the enablement of uh, AI services for our tenant. It only works with the team's room downstairs, but I have a few people that we're testing that with. That it will do voice identification. We train it with our voices and it does voice identification. So um, there's a small group of us playing around with that and when we get it working the way it's supposed to, uh, yeah, that would probably be pretty integral into creating notes more seamlessly because they would include everybody in this room, uh, regardless of who was signed into the system. So the IT working group's been working on that. Microsoft's been releasing features to help us solve those problems without charging us. So that's another good thing. Yeah, free is always good. Right. Well, you know, free. <laughs> There's no free lunch. It's you know part of our <laughs> license. Um, and so, uh, Greg and I met and he, he made this suggestion and I, uh, I'm hesitant to, to say that I will volunteer only because I'm, I'm not sure of the entire scope, but I am already doing this work for the board. So it does make sense for me to continue well, doing it. No, no, that I agree with, but I'm not sure I understand the need for a clerk because once this is in. And I understand the monitoring of the minutes and such, but personally, I'm like the TA and our executive assistant. Executive assistant we're, yeah. we're doing it in the past. I just, I don't, I'm, I don't feel that strongly. I just think once either Jason, Jason happens to be a really good candidate to do this work. Mm -hmm. If you are not on the board in the future, we will be committed. The future boards. Well, right. The goal with all of the IT policy work and the instructions and all of that stuff uh, is always to make it not about a person. So, like, that's the whole position. Well, like the the role, right? The role should exist, and someone should adopt that role, but it shouldn't be so unique that it's not adoptable. Right? Like, we shouldn't be creating a universe yeah. I, I, chimera. I, I, and traditionally, a clerk is not going to be using, like historically, AI tools. I mean, that's a new flavor that we're bringing, but. Well, so when I've looked at manual. clerks in other municipalities, they actually do what the vice chair does here. Yeah, if, yeah. but my way back when, when we, when I started on the FinCom, you know, we had a, we had a, a, a paid note taker, a clerk that took notes, but in addition to the chair and vice chair, we had appointed a clerk, which is one of the members of the board, which would really ultimately filled in when the note taker, you know, when it the, when the wasn't there. But my thought to, to, to your point is this, the whole idea is to have the technology fill that role. Sounds like what's going on. Well, it's like so, you need that. Um, 
support. It's like a IT coordinator for the clerk. So yeah, Carl, I see has. Yep. Yep. Thoughts. Carl, Carl Hummel select uh, concom chair. <laughs> I've discussed in the past couple of. Sorry, I'm confused Dynamo. about what's going on. I've discussed with people in the past how uh, the CONCOM would have value with having some of the clerical positions and responsibilities taken off of Isabella and moved to someone else. And I think that there's a role in the town for a staffer who is responsible for minutes, agendas, and other clerical work for everything in town hall. So my recommendation would be that if you can wait until you hire a new permanent town administrator, you have on one of their top uh, items to give us input as to whether it makes sense to hire a somewhat more senior clerk and have them responsible for select board, planning board, CONCOM, ZBA, Board of Health, and all of the other ones. All right, oh, that's, that's a good, that's a good point. So, uh, I. Also, just on the topic of minutes, the other option that we have, I know I'm, I'm happy that we're exploring the AI option, AI option but uh, we also have potential the resource of like senior workers to help us go through, like just to capture some of the, the votes of some of the recorded meetings to make sure that those are fully Dragon captured. Dragon talked about basically using this technology as an enhancement to the human in the loops. Right, so they, so they could, they have, right. That's, I think that's, a, yeah. that is a good, Point. And there, I know, right, so we can talk more about that, but I guess, I guess the question, so we don't necessarily have to decide on this. I think it's good to, to talk about it, but we could revisit this question potentially once we have a town administrator and an executive assistant in place and iron out those roles. That feels um, like a good, like, piece to add to the select board policy. It does. It seems that. right. So when we get there, we can consider whether there are any adjustments. So okay. I mean, I, I guess I I don't think we're it doesn't sound like we're ready to make a decision right now unless. Yes, Mike. Yeah, no, when you're done, oh. just I, when you're done, I have a comment. OK, are you done? I think so. No, I mean, yeah, I'm, so I'm yeah, giving you a heads up saying yes. I just when you're ready, just OK, go ahead. I think we're the sort of. The elephant in the room is that we've got to do something now about catching up on minutes. Yeah. Regardless of yes, yeah. roles or AI, we got to get the minutes done, right? right? I, so that to me would be agree. a topic that. And, uh, Greg and I have talked about this, and I think other people maybe have talked to Greg, to Greg about this. I did actually collect our motions from last year so that we could have somebody go through. So, like, we can maybe talk some more about, like, I would love to get a senior worker or two on board to go through I'd and I'd like to sit with those people and help them out. Okay. So we, so maybe we Elena, we have a senior yes. worker. Um I think is it Susan Ed Edmondson? Okay. So she started it, okay. She hasn't started but she's very interested in the role. So right. yes, yes, we have that I know that was that was I, I also had heard that and I know I know her and I know that she is a uh reliable person. So I think you know I think it would be good if we could get this soon because I think it makes us all uncomfortable. <laughs> Let's coordinate. Maybe okay, great. great. Okay, cool. thank you for bringing that up because we hadn't had a chance to talk about that. All right, so it's not quite 830, but I think it's we, 843. I know <laughs> I see that, but we covered things and I so I think what I would like to do is, um, you know, we I would. Um, Right, entertain the motion to enter into executive sessions, unless that should be me reading it. But I think for uh, so the first item that we have relates to the collective bargaining units, and I see we have our uh, fire chief here. If we, um, I know the first part is going to be brief, but I I don't think I actually I see is I don't see Chief Kersey. Okay. Oh, he's going to come here in person. Okay. All right. So then, and I think that we uh, sent. To uh, yeah, Paris, and Paris, Jen. We, yeah. Okay. Waiting, waiting. Okay. Great. So uh, we don't need to text her. All right. So, um, all right. So should is it is it me who does the motion then? Okay. Just, just. All right. So I just want to. So do I make when do I make the announcement that we'll be adjourning from an executive session? Is that now or after these? Well, we're gonna we're gonna 
we're going to adjourn from the executive session. Do right. No, but I mean, do I say it's that? It's in the motion. Oh, it's in the motion. It's oh, the motion. okay, perfect. Okay, then I'm going to uh, read these motions. Uh, so I move to enter into executive session pursuant to MGL 30A section uh, 21A, reason number three, to conduct strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or lit litigation position of the public body. And the chair so declares for highway, fire, police, and the uh, town hall collective bargaining agreements. Uh, and reason number two, to conduct strategy session for negotiations with non-union personnel, town administrator appointee, and furthermore, the board will reconvene in open. Oh, it okay. says we will. The board will not reconvene in right. open session uh, for the purposes of adjournment. We will adjourn from executive session. Second. All right, and then I believe we need to do a roll call vote for this. So, uh, Brugos, aye. Chanel, aye. Goddard, aye. Cooter, aye. Morale, aye. All right. All right. Thank you, everybody online. Thank you. So I figured out check doesn't work like the letter you're doing. It's all stamps. Yeah.